Okay, let's look at uh, working in Photoshop. I'm working in Photoshop Elements version 2019. Uh, this image is a nice shot, but the photographer wishes that this spot over here on the left was not nearly as bright. I'm, I'm drawing your attention to where my cursor is with these concentric circles. So what we want to do is see if we can modify just a portion or portions of this image uh, to darken them down. We're going to use something called the Burn Tool. Uh, but before, before I start working on the image, I want to make a copy of it and work on the copy instead of working on the original. So I always come up here and I do a File, Duplicate, and it says I'm going to duplicate the image and I'm going to call it IMG underscore 2110 copy. And that's fine with me. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the original and I'm going to put it away with that little X. If you're working on a Mac, that'll be a small red dot instead of an X. Now we're working on the copy, and if we really make a mistake and, that, and save our work over the original file name, it saves it over the file name that has the word copy in it, not the true original image. Um, the second thing we want to do is we want to duplicate this layer. You'll notice I'm working in the expert mode. And that means the Layers panel is exposed. If for some reason the Layers panel is not exposed down here in the lower right, click on the Layers panel to make that visible. Um, I'm going to look for a tool called the Burn Tool, B-U-R-N, Burn Tool. And it happens to be here. I've been practicing with this image. You'll notice that there, when I hover the cursor over here, some of these icons have a tiny triangle in the upper right corner. That indicates that there's more than one tool contained underneath this icon. So let's click it, and we're going to go to the bottom of the screen, bottom left corner, and you'll notice that there's the Burn tool, the Dodge tool, and the Sponge tool. Today, to darken down an image, we're going to use the Burn tool. Okay? But if I clicked over here, I'm changing what happens, and sure enough, it changes up here. So make sure you're on the Burn tool. Uh, we also want to work on the highlights in this image, just the bright spots. And we want to make sure we have a brush that is a soft brush, uh, meaning the edges are not hard edged, they're soft edge, more like an airbrush than uh, a hard mark, say a, a marker uh, or a hard paintbrush. So we're in pretty good shape. Um, I can adjust the size later. I'm going to click away. You'll notice over here as uh, there's some issues there are two sliders with size and exposure. Um, I keep the exposure kind of right about 45 or 50. Um, and the size, it depends. If I move it to the right, the circle gets bigger. This tool manifests itself as a circle. Okay. If I don't want it that big, I have to come back here to the slider. Or there's a shortcut on your keyboard next to the letter P like Paul. There are two bracket keys, two square bracket keys. And if I tap on the bracket keys, it makes the um, circle larger or smaller. Okay, so just experiment with that. The right bracket keys now, key now is making the circle bigger. I want to make it a bit small because I just want to work on the selected hot spots. Okay, now before I start doing anything, I want to duplicate this layer. I'll explain why in a minute. So I come up to the panel up here, up the top layer menu, and I say Layer, Duplicate Layer. And it says, uh, I'll duplicate the layer and I'll call it Background Copy. And I say OK. So now over here in the top right, you have Background, which is the image as it opens up, and Background Copy, which is an exact copy of that. Uh, the reason for doing that will become evident shortly. Now, as we move back into the image, we have the Burn tool selected. Uh, we have the brush soft. We have the exposure set to 45. <clears throat> There's one other thing I like to do when I'm working with the Burn tool is to adjust the opacity of this layer lower maybe to about 45 or 50 percent. That lessens the effect of whatever is going on on that layer. So that means I'm going to, I'd rather tap four or five times to get the desired result rather than tap one time for the result. It gives me more flexibility to uh, add more of the effect in the same location. So now I'm going to move around. I'm going to go click, 
click, click, click, click, click, click. I could zoom in on the image. I'm going to hold the space bar down. You see the, <clears throat> the cursor changes from a circle to a hand. And I'm going to start clicking. And you'll notice it's getting a little darker. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this area is not just light, but the detail has been lost in this. The, the exposure difference between the inside of this fallen tree trunk and the direct sun on these leaves is extreme. And film nor a digital camera is capable of, of capturing detail in both areas. So the photographer did a nice job of capturing area in the shadows, but <clears throat> that means had to forsake the detail in the highlights. So I'm going to come back out, kind of get my perspective again. I'm going to try to take some of the highlights off these areas. I'm doing individual clicks. Okay. If I make the brush bigger, I can kind of do a whole swath here. And there's something to be said for on an image of, of any kind. I'm moving over here to the lower right to darken that image of that. <coughs> That's kind of a bright spot. I'm going to come up here near the top. And there's a, a an effect called vignetting where you make the corners and the edges darker. Um, that usually has the effect of drawing the viewer's attention to the subject. And of course, the subject is sub, is haha <laughs> subject to interpretation. I'm guessing the subject of this in the photographer's intention is the texture and color inside this um, <coughs> fallen uh, tree trunk. So I'm still working on this. I'm, I'm clicking over here as I go. I'm trying to darken this down. Again, it's, it's not easy because we are getting, we're trying to darken down something that is pure white and there's no color content in it at all. You just have to sort of experiment with this, okay? Now, here's the beauty. I'll, I'll come up here try to take this out a little bit. Again, the soft brush is important. There's no hard edge on this. There's a hard edge in terms of the screen, but when it, when it paints, if you will, the effect, it's a soft edge, more like an aerosol can, spray can. Now, here's the benefit of working in the layer. Two things. One, I could come up and I could slide this down and decrease the effect of what I've done. So I've done all that clicking for a minute or so, and now if I want to, I could make it really bold. Now you'll see, now you can start to see the round spots of the brush. Okay, if you work in this fashion, it just is just so coarse. So that's why I bring the opacity down. In fact, I'm going to reduce it down to about 33%, maybe, maybe 50%. Um, watch what happens when I click this eyeball. I get a before and after look at the image. The eyeball indicates that the, whatever layer is, has an eyeball is the one that's visible. The one that's on top always supersedes the background. So we're looking at just the background copy with our changes. When I click on it, it puts a line through it, meaning this layer is now invisible, not visible. Okay, And we're seeing down through to the background. So this is all subject to taste. Um, it's kind of heavy-handed again because of the um, effect that there's no detail there, but it is a way to kind of darken this down and to uh, try to kill some of those highlights. I'm coming down, I'm, I'm working all these areas here a little bit more. I'm going to work on the opacity again. This is kind of like cooking. It's se season the taste here, just how intense you want this to be. And then the eyeball gives you before and after before and after. Okay, So that's a good way to address um, a super bright area in an image and to try to um, cool it down, if you will, or make it a little bit darker, not quite as bright. Because in general, when we look at an image, our, our eye tends to go to the bright areas first. And I'm guessing that uh, that's not the photographer's intention here. The photographer's intention is to bring your eye here. Uh, now we would do a save procedure, so we would save our work. We'd come up here and we'd do a file, and we'd maybe do a save as. <clears throat> We're going to get a dialog box here. Let me bring it into view. It's going to... It doesn't want to move. Wait a minute. Here. Let 
make it maybe make it smaller. This is the dialog box inside of Photoshop Elements for saving. It's going to save it in the same location as the original, but you should probably double check this. Uh, it's going to call it IMG underscore 2110 copy. That's fine with me. It's going to save it as a PSD, uh, meaning I could go back later, open it in Photoshop, and I will still see the layers. Um, and there's uh, zero degradation in quality when saving in a PSD format. It's called a lossless format. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say save. Now, if I want to do anything with this image, like put it in a photo book or make a print, I need to make a JPEG of this or a TIFF. Most people will make a JPEG. So let's go to a file, save as, and let's come down here. Instead of PSD, I'm going to pull down this dialog box and pick JPEG. I'm fine with the same file name. I won't have a conflict in the file system because the suffix is different and I'm going to say save. But the element software says, wait a minute, when you save as a JPEG you have a quality setting here and 12 is the best. As you move this slider to the left you make the quality worse. Not sure why you'd want to do that. There are isolated cases where you might want to do this to reduce this file size, but for all intents and purposes, you want to save it at the best possible quality. Now we're seeing that this file is now an 8.6 megabyte file. That's larger than the original was, by the way. That's because we've added a second layer. Now when I say OK, when I go to my source, which in this case is the desktop, I'll see a IMG underscore 2110 copy PSD and an IMG underscore 2110 copy JPEG. And that's it for this lesson in how to darken down a hotspot. Thanks for watching.